Who's your barber talk? Who's your barber talk family? Who's your barber talk? Here we are in exciting episode nine mm. with uh, the one and only 2023 Big Ten champions. Where, where are we at? Tommy, is that you up there on the wall? Let's zoom Holy in. Holy cow, listen. You got to change that number. Ugh. Sheesh. Soon. 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 Tournament bound. The future. Tournament bound. I'll Tell us, check. boys. The, 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 the excitement. So actually, actually, hold on a second. We, we've had a few familiar faces on here. We, we've got a beautiful new smile here to, to join us in. Give, give us this, this is Q Quinn. Give it. Give us a, a brief introduction about yourself. Yeah, so simple. Quinton Helmer, Amsterdam, the Netherlands, on the soccer team here, doing some school on the side, but it's a big part of my life, and happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So, uh, your your accent. This doesn't sound very American. It's not. No. So no. talk to Let's me. Where get, are you from? I'm from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Accent has gotten a lot better over the years. So working on it every day, but. I would say it's getting there. Well, what have you enjoyed the most about being here at IU? <laughs> you, you've you been here for how long now? This is your I've been here for a while. I've been, this is my fifth year. Yeah. I'm in grad school now. So what I've enjoyed most is it's the American people. It's yeah. good people. I feel very welcome. Um, yeah, just the people you meet and the people you share, you know, amazing experiences with. Like, look around right now. It's just friends for life, you know. So oh, it's 100%. Very, very fortunate. Oh, Some yeah. Good stuff, dude. Yes, sir. I have a question. Do you have a good American accent? Can you do an American accent? I can't. Accent? I get that question all the time. I, I can't. Can you try? <sighs> I can't. Oh, <laughs> I can't. No, he could. I could. He could. He could. Come on. Start, yeah. Dude, you could. I've heard it before. <laughs> Smile. I've, I've heard <laughs> it. What, what accent, though? Like, 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 like Indiana. Like, just like, yeah, yeah. Just like a normal, accent. like... I don't know. I try this all the time. It's hard for me. It's very hard for me. Um, it's just a bro. The the bro would do it, you know? Name a brother. Name a brother. Who who do you know here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know here? It's like, well, what are you talking about? Who do I know here? I can't even do it. <laughs> the Jersey one is tricky too. I, I struggle with it, but maybe next time I can do one. Yeah, New York. No, a New I York like accent it. is hard. I, it's I very hard. Yeah. No, that's funny. That, and that, that's one of those things It's like I don't I don't recognize how stupid I sound Trying to have another accent You know what I'm saying It's like So so uh, Q, Q's went through some things The past week Maybe two weeks And when I say I've, I've told people the story Right they're, they're sitting in my chair And we're just having Wardo was in And I was telling him about Our, our interaction Whenever we were doing your hair And he was like he was like, yeah, he was telling me the story. And I'm like trying to tell him. He's like, I don't know what he said. I just know that he said some, some crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm trying to repeat it in your accent. And everybody's laughing at me because I can't do the accent. <laughs> so I just yeah. sound like an idiot it's, uh, trying to do it. It's just a Russian accent. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a rare <laughs> accent, I feel like. It's rare. There aren't many people yeah, in many the United Dutch States. Because who of, would move from the Netherlands to the United States like long term? You know, it's like mostly like. Not many, but I would recommend it to some. It's, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's nice. It's yeah, a nice place. America's cool. We love America. Oh, you yeah. Know, oh, with yeah, all its flaws, do. we love America. Mm. Trey American. That's, that's what they say. But yeah, we got the rest of the American guys. This, this guy might make you guys feel a little bit not smooth sometimes, you know? We had Faku and what's his name on? And Luke. <laughs> Luke, Luke on. Luke and Faku. Like, man, I'm not smooth. I'm awkward, bro. I had jeans on. Awkward as yeah, fuck. I'm just like, fuck. I'll never have an accent like that. I'm just sitting here like talking normally and shit, you know? How do you have game when you don't have an accent? Now, see, that's the thing. You said that you talk normally. And I was just talking to somebody earlier today about... They, they asked me who I thought the funniest person that I knew was. And I and I was like, well, it depends on like what kind of funny we're talking. You know what I'm saying? And they were like, just somebody that says like... The stupidest shit in the world, fluently, and immediately I was like, "Boo!" Like oh, Trey, Trey came to my mind, and it's like he's a smart guy, but he's a weirdo. You Bro, know I'm I mean? a goofball. I love making uh, people it, laugh, and I love making people smile. You and know you're great mean? at it. I try you know my best. I, mean? I try my best. 
you know. But I'm also I'm a shit talker too, bro. <laughs> we were at the game. We were at the Penn State game, and I, we can talk shit with the best of them. You were you? you were most definitely at the Penn State. I wasn't. And I was back back home. But no, Trey, no, listen, Trey. Listen. Let's let's run the tape. Run back. the tape, <laughs> JT. Listen. <laughs> Dude. Can we can we talk about this entire situation? Because to me, I listen. I'll tell my side of the story, and then everyone can tell their side of the story. But I'm watching the clip. I have no idea what's about to come. I didn't know that Trey ran onto the field. I knew none of that. So all of a sudden, I just see, you know, y'all win the game. And JT, I watched the clip five or six times to really think about who I was witnessing. And then JT, I see JT hit his left shoulder, and then I'm like, all right, this is Trey. And then he comes out with the boots. He comes out with the Timberland boots, the jeans, looking like the most Indiana boy you've ever seen. It was the most beautiful <laughs> moment in the history of life. And, oh, my God. His sweatshirt was wrapped around his yeah, stomach. I tied my jacket, I tied my jacket <laughs> around my waist like a grandpa and shit. <laughs> he, he, he ran out there with the most awkward jump of 2023. Bro, I have an injury, bro. The pot, the I was whole about to say, how's the, I almost the commented, whole, how's the Ankle, bro, bro, the whole season I haven't had an injury, bro, and I tried to get up the best I could. But I, there's a picture. I got no airtime on my jump, bro. I basically <laughs> just, I basically just took a step towards JT in, in an exuberant fashion. He lunged over, basically, bro. JT, how do you feel about that? And why, why did you, like, why the, why the shoulder bump? Did you see Trey running? Oh. You're like, all right, I have to do this. It was yeah. So, twenty seconds left. Balls over the top. I think Tommy bodies the guy to let it go off for a goal kick. And at that point, you know you've just won. And so I'm going to get the ball, like trying to kill the time. And all the fans are right there. And I go down to pick it up. And I look up. And I'm looking Trey dead in the eyes. And it's like, this is happening. Like, we're storming this thing. <laughs> and so I take the goal kick. Five, four, three. I turn around. And all I see is Trey already climbing over this thing. <laughs> and so it's like, I didn't know who the first person I'd celebrate with. But I'm glad it was Trey. Yeah. I, that was a special moment. But yeah, that, that was pretty epic. Cheers. That was that. lit. Cheers to that. I remember Trey with Trey was filled with such joy and excitement for oh, himself. That's pure. I ran onto the field and I and I I met Carson and Trey talking to each other. So then I hug Carson. I hug Trey. Patty comes through screaming excited. I hug Patty. I talked to Trey afterwards. We go and get dinner later that night, and he's like, yo, were you at the soccer game earlier? <laughs> <laughs> bro, I didn't even know. I was geeked, bro. I was geeked. I was geeked that whole time. It was so funny. Did y'all did y'all have good pizza after this one? Yeah, or was it not what good? What did it look like after? We <laughs> didn't even eat. I don't know about you guys. I just, yeah. <laughs> Sam probably had some what? Some candy, bro. Yeah. No, 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 no. I kid you Some not. Dr. I kid you Pepper. not. It wasn't even. It wasn't even two minutes of being in the locker room, and Sam's two lockers down from me, and we all sit down. It's kind of like one of those, like, whew, like just you know. And I look over to give Sam the biggest hug I can give him, and he's already sitting there with a coke in his hand. Where did that come from? <laughs> bro, just I copped mean, it out of the vending machine. Thing, right? yeah, he had, he had a coke out, out on the field. Yeah. We were yeah. celebrating. He had a coke he thought, in his like, hand. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. I said, bro, who gave you this coke? <laughs> Yeah. So like Where did you get that Coke? Uh, I had media interview after the game, and then they had like a fridge of stuff, and I was like, I'm taking one of these Cokes. <laughs> I've earned this. My Coke. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, it was like a, one, of those, one of those plastic, like, uh, like mini 12, bottle? Yeah, like the 12 ounce one yeah. or whatever. I just, I was just, I was so thirsty, and it tasted so good, dude. Coke, Coke so is kind of fire, Michael. That first, uh, the first, the first point scored. Whenever you kicked it in, what was? Uh, I mean, from my angle, I almost thought that it wasn't gonna gonna go in. So to see it just wiggle its way through two people and then rock in there, how like what was? Yeah, I actually, when I was looking, I was like, that might hit the post yeah. or it might go in. But um, I don't know. If you watch the game, the first twenty minutes, like we just killed them, yeah. and the oh, fact yeah. we weren't winning like two zero at that point, I was like. Dude, we've got to score eventually because, I mean, their goalie made some big-time saves, and I think, I mean, he kept them from, I'd say, it being a 4-0 game. Oh, easily. You, know, you guys so, had plenty of shots. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that we left halftime, it was nine shots to zero, and three of them probably could have been goals. But, yeah, to see that ball hit the back of that was so relieving because um, – once once we kind of got the first goal, I, I figured, like, we're not going to really give up a goal. Like, I was so confident in that. Yeah. Like, the only way we give up a goal is, like, 
if they're lucky. They're not going to, like, play through us and beat exactly. us that yeah. way. Long balls, lots yeah. of long balls. Yeah. They're playing defensively. I mean, so defensively the, the entire game. I was... I, I couldn't believe. Yeah, I think the lack of I attack. think they almost came here like trying to get to a PK shootout. I, I don't think they're really trying to beat us in overtime or in regular time. I think yeah, because they had just won a PK shootout prior the game before, so they probably had their confidence high. Yeah. So I think they honestly came here trying to get a tie and just go to pens, but luckily that didn't happen. How did that goal feel? I mean, on, uh, the, felt, on the biggest stage. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things you like. Well, t- first off. Uh, shout out to all our fans because we were like, we we're like, man, 12 a.m. Students are probably partying on a or 12, 12 p.m. <laughs> students are probably partying on a Saturday. Yeah. They're not gonna wake up and go to our game at soccer. Like no one, like you know, like, like, and then Tommy and I go to warm up like 50 minutes before the game starts, and there's already students in the student section. We're yeah. like, and it was a, like a handful of them too. It wasn't just like one or two. Like yeah. wow, like. All right. People are here ready So to then, walk. like, you know, the clock keeps counting down. There's 30 minutes left. It starts to fill up. And then we go put our jerseys on the locker room with, like, 10 minutes left. And we come out, and the whole stadium sold out. It's Packed. only it's only standing room. Yeah. And our coach was like, he's never seen a crowd like that besides the Elite Eight game that they hosted. Yep. So that was crazy. That's then, you guys. That's, that's, that's the squad that you guys have, you know, progressed yeah. to build over the years. And, I mean, I don't think we've ever seen anything like this in terms yeah. of the dominance, you guys. And... And the fans are going to come because they want to see that kind of greatness. No, yeah, you know? and like them rushing the field was sick. But yeah, like you, like the question, the goal, like you just kind of black out for a second. Like yeah. every everything yeah. just goes dark. You're just like, what do I do now? So I, uh, I just ran to the fans. That, that was my. That's idea. your. That's your go to. That's the go to. So uh, I was going to say. So what? Who's the? We had we had Luca Faku on. Who your your celebration? That Luke said that. Uh, what, Bell- Bellingham? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. He he was telling us that that was what like he told everybody like if you guys score. Yeah, he told me that. This is a celebration. Yeah, he told me that the day before. Like, if you score, do this. So like, yeah, all right, all right. yeah. I'm sure he was loving that whenever yeah, he got. The- yeah. As a matter of fact, whenever uh, when you ran over to the student section to do that, I tried to FaceTime it, and uh, he was with his dad. At the time, like his dad was in town. So I tried to FaceTime and I was like, yo, they're doing it right now. Yeah. yeah. And another thing is what I kind of regret about that. So like where, where Trey was sitting, I didn't realize how packed that area oh, yeah, was dude. until I saw the video of us scoring. Because like you kind of just like tune it out during yeah. the game. And I didn't realize that. And I was like, dude, I should have ran to those guys. I ran across the field. <laughs> No, it was. I think uh, that's the main area. That's where that's yeah. where you always run. That's yeah. what the, where the cameras are at for it. Like, yeah, that's what they were expecting. You know yeah, what I'm for sure. What was kind of the the coach's message leading up to that game? Because I feel like with a program like you guys, you're so experienced for this. It felt like you you were <laughs> meant to be there the entire time you were there. What was his message? Not even before the championship, but just throughout the entire Big Ten tournament. You guys can all answer this. Just like. I think one thing is, like, the whole season, obviously, we struggled. I mean, when we were on this podcast earlier, me and Sammy, (laughs) we talked about it, how we were struggling and stuff. Um, But I think we mentioned we always knew, like, we we always believed. Like, we were always, we always knew how good we could be and how good we were. I think we were, like, a lot has changed since then, but we've been good. Um, But now I think we've capitalized on, like, a lot more chances but I think that was kind of the message, just like, just keep believing, like throughout the season, like it'll come for us, and and it kind of has, like it slowly changed, and like when it starts, like when goals start dropping, um, which they have, and the teams teams kind of like buzzing. I think there's just the confidence in there. So I think it's just the message, like at this point of the season, just like carry that confidence, just know how good we can be, how good we are, like as a team. And like I said, when you have that confidence as a team, I think we're we're not afraid to play anybody, and we know we can beat anyone. Yeah, and to go off your point too, like it's exactly what you said. Like we we have been in those big games before, and like that's the culture of IU, though, and that's what the coach's message always is: is trust it. Like you, get, we have guys in the locker room who have played in two national championships. Um, how many Big Tens do you have? Six. Six. Six Big Tens alone there. So. It's like, you know, that's the that's the standard. Like, I mean, you're expected to perform in the tournament games, the win or go home games. And so we're I, I would say we're well more prepared than, you know, anyone we're gonna play in those regards. We you come to IU to play those games. So that's his message is 
you know, just trust the work you put in and know that you you perform in the big games. So performing in big games, jumping from, you know, a goal that was made to, you know, a, a few and, and there at the end, you know, that the, the most important, you know what I mean? Being able to jump out in front of a ball, and I, I've complimented you on this before. Someone's running directly at you full speed into the box, and you run at them to to grab the ball, to stop the ball. Just to, that's a, that's like a different type of like getting over a fear. You know what I mean? So. Explain to me how it feels to, you know, jump out in front of a ball to stop stop some flying, you know what I mean, object coming at you or to even know where it's going to be, how it's going to go. Yeah, I mean, every soccer player will always say that the goalkeepers are the ones with the screw loose. And these guys always say that. I like to think I'm one of the more normal ones, to be honest. I've, I I could, they know them too. No, I've never met a normal goalkeeper. You go, you ask any soccer player if they know a normal goalie, no. they don't know him. No, no, not, no. None. Well, you gotta have some. Kinda. Kinda. Hey, I mean, this is a goalkeeper right here. It's a different right here. dynamic, right? Like you're you're but essentially playing a different game with a different set of <laughs> with a different set of skills. Nah, but me like, and JT are goalkeepers. Yeah. Hey, this is this is our second. Yeah, this we're, we're, we're having a moment yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. I gave it up. Mine is gone. We're in for Okay, glad you didn't have a mic on that one. It's it's a different skill set, right? Like at the end of the day, you're playing. A distinct position that is unlike any other on the field at that time, other than the opposing goalkeeper. So, I mean, I don't know. I think one thing that goalkeepers have to have, and one thing obviously that every great goalkeeper has, is decisiveness. You know, and just the ability to throw their body in front of anything. So, I mean, that's. I mean, obviously every great ath- athlete is decisive, but there's more of a physical aspect with it. You know, with with keeping. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's more so just the decision making of it. You're trained from a young age in goalkeeping that, you know, that's the way it is and to attack the ball. And so that's not really on the front of your mind. It's more just being clean in your decision making because you hesitate, you'll get punished. And um, the next level, the best goalkeepers are the ones who are the most decisive and the most consistent. And that's for me, the big thing is keep my team in games and, you know, if make it as simple as possible. We all know that one goalkeeper that always chopped his feet. He run out, he run out and start chopping his feet. What'd you see them feet start to chop? We I don't know. I had a, I played uh, I played in high school. I had a goal we had I had a goalkeeper I played with. I had a goalkeeper I played with. And he would go out and he would start ch- he would literally as he was running like start full sprint out and then he would stop. Like straight up just stop. Like try to run back. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah, was always something that. that like scared the shit out of me watching. I was like, holy crap. But no, I have a screw loose. I think generally it's not because I'm a goalkeeper. Or uh, so I train I get along, man. Yeah. Yeah. People say we look alike, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone came on me the other day. It's like, is that Trey? Who's Trey want, dude? Yeah. Yeah. Trey's got a few screws loose. But you gotta be. I think we all do, you know. You, you gotta be. You, you gotta be a little crazy. You know what I mean? Did you screw the loose's screw? It's better to have a screw loose. Because if I was a regular person, I wouldn't believe in anything i wouldn't believe in myself or like <laughs> seriously though most people most Yo, people if you, told me, if you told me when i freshman year that i would be able to like support myself and like you know like be where i'm at now with like the business and like the connections and everything or like anything like that i, I would have thought you they were crazy you know what i mean so it's like at a certain point yeah. it's like you have to be crazy in order to to follow through and see things that people normally wouldn't see because most people f- r- like run their lives by like thinking about what's most practical and that's the reason why people like me can succeed because people look at what's practical and i just think well i could do this because nobody else thinks they can do it you know what i mean and people have to put themselves out there like in today's world i think putting yourselves out there is like the hardest thing and it might bring a lot of backlash but it takes like the the craziest person to consistently do it because you might post one video and you're like all right that got a million views, bunch of comments, and they were all kind of negative comments, but you might never post again. But it, it, it takes a, a stronger person to keep posting it and and more so fail and then get back up, right? Bad take Jack. Oh, God. No, but putting yourself out there, I mean, that's that's the name of the game. And, you know, like everyone in the, like, I guess, I don't know, not to be sound conceited, but everyone in the public eye, you know, faces like heavy criticism and people not understanding. You know, like that's one thing that fucks me up, bro. That's one thing that, what, what what's so funny? Keep talking. 
<laughs> bro, one thing is... <laughs> motherfuckers hating, bro. But what I was saying is, like, everyone everyone who's in the public... Bro, he was trying to call his phone and fell down the couch. It's good. Yeah, Just good. keep talking, man. What I'm saying is, everyone who's like experienced nobody some cares. Sort of On to the next. No, just kidding. <laughs> Bro, it's crisscross applesauce. Ah! Sorry. You motherfuckers suck. So nut, nuts loose. Um, what? JT. All right. You just totally ruined my goddamn segment. I'm gonna hey, finish what I was gonna. Keep it going, bro. Say, asshole. I, I'm enjoying this actually. Nah, it's over, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this one wasn't on no, me. I promise. Uh, no, like one thing is like. Especially with af- athletes and business owners and content creators alike, I guess. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> shut the fuck. <laughs> like you're always gonna, you're always gonna be faced with people who have something to say about you. You know, what I mean, you're always gonna have people like who don't understand or who think that you're crazy or think, you know, well, what are you gonna do when you graduate? What jo- what type of job are you gonna yeah, get? You know, like that type no. of shit where it's like, I don't know. You kind of got to be. I mean all the best people or all the people who really do something in life are steadfast in their own beliefs and are reasonable, but still steadfast. So if I'm crazy for, you know, believing in myself, which I might, I still might be crazy, but you know, like I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to be crazy. Fuck it. Thank you for letting me finish that. That should have been, that should have been a t- minute segment. God bless. I think that just what you said is people should dream bigger. Of course, bro. I wish I dreamt bigger, bro. I want to be the biggest IU plug we and then still I did dreaming, that shit bro. two years ago, and I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, I got to do something else now." <laughs> I want. I, I should have been president. Fuck it. <laughs> no, I, it's so funny. I have this kid. Uh, he comes in here and gets his hair cut. I've been cutting his hair for like two years now. Gonna be a great human being. <laughs> awesome kid. He can name. He's like ten years old. He can name every president we've ever had. I'm, I'm talking like the kid just has some good knowledge in his head. His first goal is to go to the NBA. And I'm looking at his bloodline and I'm like, listen, baby, we're not going to have a conversation now, but what's plan B just in case? You know what I'm saying? President of the United, President of the United States. Hey, he can always I be said, a listen, bro, creator. you dream as big as possible. I want you to go out there and shoot as many shots as possible every game. And right now, he's the biggest kid on his team the last four years. You know what I'm saying? He's putting up shots. Puberty's a bitch. Hey, listen. I remember I was the biggest kid in class until the eighth grade, dog. (laughs) Eighth grade hit. Everybody I knew, I was like, damn. Y'all got tall as hell. When's my turn? Hey, I mean, I'm still waiting on it. (laughs) China and get that get that shit they be putting in people's legs. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, I might uh, do that. Reclassify, reclassify. Anyway. reclassify. You need to go get some uh, rehab on your ankle, bro. For real, it hurts right now. It was cause you did that, bro. Did what? The height, the height transfer, the jump. No, it's because I played jump. basketball yesterday. Legendary moment. And we'll Legendary it moment. Forever. Totally worth it. And they weren't. Yeah. They weren't Tim's. They were Wheat 13's. <laughs> <laughs> I needed something with some insulation. Oh, Sam, God. we were talking about we were talking about clothes earlier. Is that is style something that you like? Yeah, you, dude, you got you, some drip. You care about, or is it is uh, it something you just normally you know the just you know just be putting it on casually? No, I mean I I don't. There's kids on our team that dress up like every day, like they present themselves well, and then there's some that I'm just like, dude. Uh, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, like I, I, for class, I really don't really care that much to pop out. Like today, I wore I wore fruity pebble dunks with fucking Nike sweats. Like I, I don't, I, I don't care that much. But I like, I like putting on good fits. Like if I'm gonna like, you know, go like if I know I'm gonna go out, like I'll yeah, put go to together. dinner. Or yeah, or but like, like that. yeah. What are you wearing on a date? You want a date? Say Fruity Pebbles? Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't do fuck, I gotta get a date first. That's the first. You gotta issue. get a date. Se- second, so <laughs> second. I mean, I know a couple guys. My bad, <laughs> girls. Sorry, my bad. Uh, sec- second, second. <laughs> if I were going to go a date, I guess it would be like where where we're going. You know, like uptown, <laughs> uptown cafe, <laughs> suit, tuxedo. Uh, I'd wear. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'd honestly like. Maybe I'd at, I'd get some opinions probably like from from guys that 
go on these amount of dates or that I, I like. Like, some guys have, like, more, like, on our team, more, like, classier style. Yeah, like I'm kinda, slacks. I'm kind of like the streetwear, like, you know, like like stuff you sell, like graphic tees, yeah. like... Jeans. You Are you a jeans guy? You wear I, jeans? I wear, I wear jeans here. I like ripped jeans, like He's ripped me. ones. Mm. But, um... Not jeans, like I wouldn't. I wouldn't wear those necessarily, but like, yeah. like ripped jeans, I like. But um, if I were to go on a date, I probably, I'd probably get like, I don't know, Tommy. Tommy has some good fits that are like casual, chill. I'd probably like ask him to borrow like one of his sweaters or something. Mm. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of good dating outfits. Good dating outfits. Yeah, I would say these <laughs> these outfits are more like a pregame fit. You yeah, know, like something casual, something yeah. slight. I got a question now to to bounce off of it. If we want to stay on topics, right? What is your dream date? Let's write float off. <laughs> July fifth. Like place. Okay, okay. Yeah. I thought we were talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big, <laughs> big old. <laughs> the, this podcast both. was never. Who are you, who are you taking on a date? Yeah. And where are you taking them? Uh, is, it, is it a celebrity? Celebrity. Or, or somebody you go to school with. You know, just one, one, whatever. <laughs> Someone's getting name dropped. Someone's getting name dropped. Uh, no. Nah, um, <laughs> Q. See, Q and I have the same answer for celebrity. So. Yeah, are you going to take her or am I going to take her? Yeah, we're, we're both taking Margot Robbie. 100%. Um, the place wise? I don't know. Maybe cycle through. I'll have to think about it. But. um. Yeah. I'm going Selma Hayek. Oh, and we're going. Okay. What did he just say? Selma, Selma Hayek. Hayek. Well, how old is she? I don't care. Older lady. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't definitely know. older than me. You know what I mean? It's like but 40, 50. Or or young Cameron Diaz. Mask Cameron Diaz. <laughs> crazy. Absolutely crazy. So we can change their age. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we can, know, can, we can get them in What are you thinking about? We can get them in Who are you bringing back? <laughs> in the in the yeah. Who are you bringing back? <sighs> We're <laughs> bringing back. Hey, hey. Bring him back in time. Hear me out. Hear me out. Back one time. Day. Let me guess what you're going to say. I feel like you're going to say Jennifer Aniston. That's a good one. That's a good one. But I, I mm. think she's still in her prime. Oh. Mm. Sandra yeah. Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him on. Baby. No, no, no. Uh, damn. I just yeah, lost she's her. bad. I agree. I just she's lost her in my head. Romantic guys here, huh? <laughs> I got a few girls on my mind right now, Oof. but it's not a good start. Damn. Where are you taking Margot Robbie? Q? Yeah, tell me that. I'm taking her home. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. I um. He said, he said no, 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 no. <laughs> nah, that's a that's a woman. So you gotta, you know. Treat her with respect, but I would take her. <laughs> After he said that, I would treat her to a nice Amsterdam day. Day in Amsterdam, nice weather out. You know, canal walk, good restaurants, good dessert spots. Go to like a nice sky lounge. Maybe some, maybe some art in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an artsy person, hey, but he, if she is, he I'll just took you on the same trip that he took JT on. <laughs> yeah, that's my girl. That's, that's, that's my yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, just simple. I think it's important to be simple. Dude, I'm so upset right now. I want you guys to keep talking because... What are you talking about? Jessica Alba. Oh, my God. Back in the day, God. Prime Alba. On God, Listen, Triple G. I, I just saw... I just yeah. saw... What's the movie where... um? They're kind of in a rough neighborhood, and she's like the she's honey. Like, yes, bro. Oh! No! <laughs> Jessica Alba and Honey is diffy. Hey, listen, I'm taking her to a rough neighborhood. We're having <laughs> Chinese food. What listen. was what was her what was her role? Now was she like a coach? She or, was a, or a, a dance, a dance coach? instructor. Yeah, a dance instructor. Man, listen, that is such a good take. Uh, hey. Such a good take. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I don't know her name. Maybe you might. The 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 actress from the Girl Next Door. Oh my God! That's a good movie. I don't know her name. What's her name? But, but like, movie. give me her in that movie. You know, we don't need to know her name. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie? <laughs> yes, that's Man. a good movie. Stunning. It's a good movie. If you want to bring back people, you know, to their prime, but she's dead now, so it's tricky. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe really, okay. oh, she really intrigues <laughs> yes. me. It's me too. <laughs> she really does. I don't know what I it agree. is. There's I agree. Just something. I, have a, I have a poster for her in my room. I do too. 
<laughs> but uh, it, no, but it's more it's like, like a classy one. I, it's a classy one. You no, do no, too. I do too. <laughs> yeah, Are you serious? He, I do he's too. He's got a big ass painting. I got a big yeah. ass painting of, my, of uh, Marilyn. Mer- I have Marilyn. one. It's like uh, yeah. what like, a date that would be. Yeah, I. <laughs> she she uh, she I dated like, JFK. I feel like if we got to pick the date with Marilyn Marilyn Monroe, we should pick the time period. Like I think it'd be sick to live in the 30s and like or like yeah. pick a. Like in eighties or something, you know what I'm saying? I like don't think pick she, her uh, up in yeah. like no, a I'm nice saying, car. Like, you, you get to pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying yeah. like oh. it'd be cool to take like a modern girl on a date in the nineties. To live you know? or the to roaring twenties. Yeah, the 20s. roaring twenties. To be, live in a time when it was the black and white. Gatsby. That's what I'm saying. The great yeah, Gatsby. 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 I'm taking Margot Robbie back to the roaring twenties. That would be cool. Yeah, like see what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. He said. He said. I'm taking. I'm taking. Uh, it's gonna be a movie. What was it? I'm taking. I'm taking Jessica Alba back to the the baby boom era. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Dude, um, Dude. um I don't know. JT, who was your JT. girl? Oh. oh, I know who he's gonna oh, say. Who is he taking? Because <laughs> we did. We uh, we have a every year we have a team get together and we fill out a form with like random facts, and then we play a game at the end, and. They'll ask a question. You have to answer for your teammate and see if you get the right answer. It's how well you know your teammate. And we we fill these f- sheets out. I mean, we fill them out in August. Yeah, so you fill it out at the beginning of the year, and then we do the game at the end of the year to yeah, see so like who we, remembers the answer. We did it right before we left, so it's like late April, May. And Sam goes up, and it's how well does he know JT and celebrity crush, celebrity, celebrity crush. crush. And I thought no chance. I didn't even know mine. And this kid pulls one out of nowhere. Yeah, it was it was Mila Kunis. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, forgetting you're, Sarah Marshall, Mila Kunis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, yeah. you know, me, yeah. it's it's a little basic, but something about Kendall Jenner is just her aesthetic yeah. is I, yeah. I like it a lot. I would I think that would be my okay. date. Really, I'd take her on a hot air balloon. Mm. Oh my okay. gosh! Here we go. This kid's full of shit. He's full of shit. Yeah. No, I would no, take. Keep going. I would keep going, take keep her going. on a hot. I would take her on a hot air balloon. What city? What's the, it depends. Bloomington. There's a lot of land. Uh, Bloomington. And Bloomington. That's a lot of land. <laughs> we, we, we listen. She's seen everything else. Yeah, she's never been to... Oh, she, 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 has. She, was, she has. She was here last week. <laughs> she was. And then we'd land at a perfect spot for a set-up picnic. Ah. And we'd, mm. you know, maybe a bottle of wine, and crackers, <laughs> cheese. Where, where? Crackers and cheese. Oh, where are you going to land? At the homeless park? At the post office? <laughs> Like this is Bloomington, pretty, ain't it? It's pretty. <laughs> Come oh, on, oh, oh, no. hey, I, I've got. I just, I just thought of something for the. She's married now, so it probably wouldn't wouldn't work. But um, I think I think she could be one of my my new sleeper picks for like a crush. No longer her last name, but Sophie Richie. Classy. I, think. I would take her on like a, a nice English date. Like I'd go to. Go in England, tour the city, you know, like it'd be a full day like you did with Margo. <laughs> All right, you know I meant no. London. Shut up. You know I, I meant England. England. Lund- like Fish and chips. Millwall away no, end. No. <laughs> yeah, we go to an Arsenal <laughs> game. <laughs> we go to an <laughs> Arsenal <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> she would love that. Yeah. No, yeah. No, she sick. would love that. All right. I would, uh, I'd probably take uh, Alex Cooper and we'd do a podcast. And then mm. I'd probably take her to mm. Indiana Hoosiers basketball game afterwards. And mm. then she'd give me the Gluck Gluck 9000. Yo! <laughs> Yo! We got that. No, listen, Jack, Jack, Jack said something not that long ago. And he goes, If you mean to be honest, I think that I would pull so many girls if our first date was a podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, because I'm more confident on mic. Yes, that's a fact, bro. That's interesting. And you'd be saying some bullshit just with Yo, can you face. imagine, damn, like, you, you meet a girl on what a dating app? You gotta do a podcast. Gotta do a a podcast. Podcast. That would be crazy. Yeah. You gotta do a Adam podcast. Adam 22 style. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's that's got obscene. You just call but it that is t- a great idea. Imagine that. You're on a Tinder Talks. Jack, you're on that's a, a dating app. Tinder that's Talks. Idea. It's like, what do you want to do? You say first day you hop on my podcast and you get to know, you just start Tinder talk firing away questions and Bang. It's see Tommy's podcast. just giving me game now. And I'm you gonna post use that. that. Yeah. I'm gonna that's be like, when I come on the pod, that's so the, check that's me the out. And then she checks the podcast 32 episodes later. <laughs> 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 that's fair. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Over 32, <laughs> really? Yeah. I would 
just thinking that. How long have you been doing this? I was just, I was like, think about it. Because you can only do one 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 podcast a girl, and if you're gonna make money, you gotta keep doing episodes. Next thing you know, he's got so he's many a- people <laughs> swiping right on him. Is he- <laughs> he's gonna be like the Bachelor, dude. Just that's so funny. Who was it? Somebody, uh, Danny Duncan. I don't know if you guys watch him on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So he, uh, when he was first coming up, he lived in L.A. and he didn't like. He couldn't live at his friend's house. Like, he didn't have anywhere to stay. So he would just find girls to swipe on. And, and then he would go and stay with them for the night. <laughs> and, then, and then he would go and do anything else. Fuck you what I'm doing right now. Listen, he said... <laughs> hey, he said... He said he wanted to come up with this YouTube concept that was called 30 Swipes, 30 Nights. <laughs> But that's a, is that like a true story? That's a true story. He it? talked about it. He cried about it on uh, somebody's podcast. Like him talking about his come up and just how he's gotten to where he's gotten. So if it, what if a girl like wasn't wasn't down for that? He's fucked for the night. Like he sleeps on the street. He yeah. Or he finds figures. He's back, figures. He yeah, he keeps swiping. Keeps swiping. <laughs> Late nights, late night, night swipes. Swipe. But he wasn't famous that time. No, no. So it's actually funny. If, like if you li- like hear his story out, his cameraman that he like. He would fly out to uh, L.A. and he would stay with his cameraman for a few weeks before he would fly back home. And uh, one day he was flying back home and his cameraman was like, yo, like I got you a present before he was like dropping him off at the airport. And he opened it up and it was like, this is a voucher for one free car from me. You know what I'm saying? So his cameraman bought him like a $1,500, $2,000 car, right? And Danny literally canceled his his flight home. And he was like, look, if you're willing to like do the camera work, I'll sleep in my fucking car and we can just do this shit. You know what I'm saying? So then it was like two years later on Danny's birthday, he took him to the same spot that he gave him the, the gift certificate, the voucher. And there was a Tesla sitting there wrapped up, and he was like, this is yours. It's fire. Thank you. Another example, crazy people. Yeah. That's what you got to do, especially now, bro, especially in content creation. There are so many people that make content. It's incredible. Every single person in America now wants to be a content creator because it's, of no offense, Jack, I, we make content. This is content, but a lot of this shit is fucking bullshit you know what i mean and there's just so much of it so in order to like actually succeed in like something where you're competing with 15 million people like you have to be crazy you have to be able to like do what people will not do it's also easy to just pick up a phone record yourself for 15 seconds and put it out there 100 percent. and and that's the craziest part about it is anyone can do that at any point now and that was never a yeah. thing and that's what makes this world such that's a fair. crazy world there's like recently I've been hearing like people like oh he he got famous on TikTok like cuz of some kids that like their videos but like they actually did it you know what I'm yeah. saying like yeah. they yeah. did it and they obviously it took time but like they get so much hate but like they they did it and it's the people who didn't do those things yeah, that they're are like saying, oh, you, that, you know that are talking I was, down that kid that. at Penn State like, I was yeah, talking exactly. I was talking shit to him I was telling him to do uh, TikTok I, I, I heard you hey funny story <laughs> we played at Penn State this year. Their goalie, yep. Chris Shakes, yep. he uh, he came up to me after the game. He was like, dog, I watched that whole podcast of you and Sam. No <laughs> way. He goes, that was, that was awesome. Let's go, bro. Yeah, shout, nice. out. shout out, Chris. Nah, nah, sorry nah. for talking shit. <laughs> yeah, and sorry for the L. I, I'm not going to lie. The, uh, the amount of people that have just said something to me, not even about barbering, but like, yo, you have a podcast? I never would have imagined it. It's only getting bigger, baby. Trey, they don't even know him as Who's Your A1 anymore. He's Who's Your Barber Talk. That's Cap. <laughs> <laughs> who's Your A1 still, is who's your still A1. carrying. <laughs> For now. For now. But I th- but the th- same thing about like crazy people and, and content creation and kind of like having that ability to do like something like, like Danny Duncan did is like same thing with athletics. And especially like at this level now, I feel like there are a lot of people who were naturally talented. And I don't know, you guys would know better than me, but like from what I see, like there are a lot of people who are naturally talented that just don't have the work ethic to like compete and get better at the same rate. You know what I mean? Like a certain point, like 
everyone yeah. who reaches reaches you like higher higher ranks is just like I always say hard work out. beats talent when talent doesn't work hard it's facts especially yeah. once you start really getting to that point right it's bro when you get that's the thing when you get to that point you see who's been working hard you know do, what i'm saying do you think that i find this urge with content creation and like Brad was here last weekend, right? He does this too. The Nelk boys did it when they were coming up. It's just constantly traveling everywhere and everywhere. Do you think with athletics, when you're growing up kind of in that high school, middle school age and trying to just get to tournaments and like go all over the place. We had the tennis guys on last week. They were talking about all the countries they were at, Belgium, right? Going all over the place. Do you think that's like a good thing when you're trying to get noticed and whatnot and just getting those experiences? I mean, I, I can go. So when I was young, I played academy in, in the Netherlands, and we always played international tournaments, a bunch of them. And I would say it's a great it's a great opportunity to, like, show yourself to a bigger stage and, like, a, an audience that's, you know, not just Amsterdam or, like, the area around you. But when it comes for me, especially when you're young, when you're 11, 12, 13, I was in Germany, France, Belgium every weekend. So I would say at that age, it, I think it's about moderation. It's important to be with your friends and, you know, the people you love. But I think at this age, I think the more you travel, the better it is. Like it's like you educate yourself. There are great opportunities. We all think we we're the coolest person in the room, or like, especially here in college, everyone's like, "Oh, I'm this cool kid socially." But then when you kind of branch out, you see that you're in a bigger picture. You're just a nobody. <laughs> and I know seriously. And I think if you just take that approach, life is a lot more fun. If you just see a lot of like learnings you can get from the most random people even people that you know everyone is like judgmental a little bit and you're like who is that who's that bot like who's that loser but then you kind of like start hearing their story especially in abroad and they're like the coolest people they're just different than you so i would say traveling is something that's probably one of the most important things in my life for sure so i would say it's very important but when you're young you just got to focus on your family and the people you love so not not as much i think yeah, 100%. I mean, life is, it's all about the people you meet, and those connections can get you somewhere that you never thought you could get. And so, for you know, when you're a kid, you're traveling, and us now, in the where we're at, and you're traveling, you're playing, or you're meeting new people, I can give you countless stories of times where you just, you meet someone, and that connection will circle back someday down the road, and you'll be in a whole new position, thanks to just taking the time of day for one person. And so, it's incredible. Like, you walk down campus, and you see... It's rush hour between class and you see hundreds of kids, but it's like each kid's got an incredible story that no one's ever heard. And luckily we got podcasts now, right? And people are starting to get to know people more and get to know us. And it's, oh, I didn't know Tommy was living in Germany. I didn't know Q was from Amsterdam. I didn't know Sam was doing all the things that Sammy does, right? But <laughs> yeah. And um, it's incredible, right? So it's you got to take the time of day for people. And um, I think I use a pretty cool place for that. That's one thing I really like about barbering. It's just yeah. naturally, I ha like, I ta I have to take the time for somebody. So yeah. it's like somebody can sit in my chair bored this next 30 minutes, or like I can learn about them. They can learn about me. We can learn something together. Like we can just talk. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, it's made me like learn so much about humans. You know what I'm saying? From, from, facial structures and how certain humans are so similar and like the structure of their body to the way that I can tell like energies apart from other people just based off of conversations with somebody that's going to tell me the same exact thing that somebody did three three cuts ago you know what I mean just answering the same questions me being able to just like learn people and I think that like like you said being able to like as a barber here at IU, I get so many different ethnicities of people, different areas, like nationalities, so much information that I get a process on a day to day basis about humans. You know what I mean? And it's a it's a blessing. I don't think that there's any room that I could ever walk into and not be like not present myself in a way that makes everybody comfortable with me. People, man. That's what it all comes from. I was thinking about that. I think we've talked about this before on the podcast. It's like, at the end of the day, like, the most, it, it's like a, I'm going to try to explain this in a way that makes sense. But, like, the reason why, you, why it's, you're supposed to be good, for example, is not because of any other reason other than it's good, right? You can't do, 
good because it'll give you an advantage because then you're not doing good. You're seeking advantage. Okay. You can't be good because it's uh, a, a math equation about society because then you're making you're doing math equations. You're not. It's, being it's the law. It's the law of giving. You know what I'm saying? And what it what it says is like give without expectation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like if you're gonna do do without expectation of anything in return. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like when I give somebody a compliment, I don't expect them to compliment me back. You know what I'm saying? If I hold the door for somebody, I'm not expecting somebody to open the door for me in the next place that I go into. Like it like. I'm not I'm not trying to help you out because I want something from you, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. my my connection with God is my connection with God, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like like us constantly being watched, it's like that law of giving is the idea of like I'm going to give you everything I have because I have all that I need. Does that yeah. make sense? Well, I, I I was just kind of relating that to like business in the sense because even in the, the most, same the essence, most important like message or it the translates most important, to it all. Most important thing in business isn't to be business minded; it's to be an actual fucking human being, and to be relatable with people and actually understand what, like, why we're here and what is actually redeeming, and and that will lead you to success. Chasing success and chasing money will not lead to like success. Being a real person and and like. Just trying to help, pe- trying to help commun- the community, or or build something bigger than yourself is really where it's at, you know. But that's crazy to think that, well, people who are finding success in business are not, like, necessarily like at the highest levels, like business mind. I mean, I guess investments and all that shit. But like talking about real human beings, you if know, you like, wanna, if you wanna be a successful human being, a successful business person, successful in the mind. The Seven Laws of Spiritual Success by Deepak Chopra. Fantastic book, short read, amazing. What you're I trying to say? I thought he was say, in classical music. I hey. thought he made classical Listen, music. What, what, what you're trying to say? What hey. you're good? What you're? What you're trying to say? It it, should, it just <laughs> says it effortlessly. How am I gonna respond to that? It, you don't. Some things don't need a response. <laughs> yeah. Some things just Less don't need more. a response. Let. Ooh. I was thinking about this the last like couple days. Oh, uh, mm. like winning. I think like winning feels great in life too. Like other stuff, whether it's like successes or like goals you have. But I think losing hurts oh. way more than winning feels good. And I think that's something that like. I, I feel like now, like, I almost think to myself, like, I just, I don't want to lose. Mm. Rather than, I just, I want to win every, like, I just, I don't want to lose. And that's not, I'm not saying that, like, I don't want to not be the first guy. Obviously, I want to win, but I think the, the, the what you feel when you lose is yeah. way worse than how good winning feels. Yeah. And I think some people got to, you know, 100% take life that way and look at life that way because not just, athletes where there's a score like a scoreboard and you see that it's just anything with goals just well, i think i think lose. losing in life though is different than losing in sports because you can lose in life and still like you're like all right at least i tried when you lose in sports you can't get that moment back you know like like if you had a if you had a business idea in life and you tried it and it flopped you, at least you tried it at least it's not just in the back of your head like what well, if i never tried it but when you lose in sports it's like like the worst feeling ever, yeah. so that's where I think it's a little different. But I do agree, losing hurts way more because we last year we we lost the regular season of the Big Ten in the last three minutes of the game. We gave up a goal, so if we wouldn't have given up the goal, we would have won it. And we came off to feel like this is the worst feeling ever. And then winning it this year, it felt nowhere like it kind of just felt like eh, like it, like it felt good, but like the losing felt so much worse. Here's the thing with with that is like. Losing, you will always have that lesson and that feeling in you, and you'll carry that the rest of your life. Winning is it, it's so mm. short lived and overrated in that it's awesome to accomplish a goal. But for example, we win the Big Ten. You celebrate, all the families are there, your teammates, the guys who you work so hard with. Beautiful thing. And you wake up the next morning and you go, Oh, sun came out. Yeah. Look down. Yeah, like Nothing no changed. one cares. We, like we had tra- we had training the we next tra- day. No one thought we were gonna have training. <laughs> yeah. we had training. I was like, yeah. all right, we just want a big time. Like we got off day tomorrow, maybe two. And but then it's what's know. bigger, what's better, what's next, and that's life. That is life, because at a certain point, it's all like when you win in a sports game, the same endorphins are released. But like sometimes when you eat or when you you know like 
in a in a like a like a ancient sense like when you kill an animal and and like all those wins are necessary to survive like we are wired to seek like that winning feeling because of our like genetic makeup like now, a win think, is necessary i think to really appreciate those winning moments as as short lived as they are you have to experience or even like you said like uh in order to appreciate your wins, you have to experience great loss. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what I mean? You you can't. You never know what a win looks like if you've never taken a loss. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? So shit, I must. <laughs> shut I must, the I must fuck not up. enjoy winning then. Fuck, <laughs> dude. All, all I'm thinking about when you guys are talking about this is the prime example is Tom Brady because he won at the highest and lost at the lowest. Bro. You go shut undefeated. What I'm no, thinking, no, that's no, facts. no. I hear you. I hear you. What no, I'm thinking he is he lost he the, the Super the Bowl in an undefeated <laughs> season and was the greatest quarterback ever and won seven Super Bowls. So he's so seen what, both and sides. And then kissed his son. But he always wanted the next one. Is uh, you know, in life you're gonna have highs and you're gonna have lows. Just make sure that the highs are are high as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Oh God. You live by yeah. that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that. That. Yeah. That. That's <laughs> no, I really, I, like I really that. do, I, like I really do think that you know what I'm saying, like. Like I said, you have to experience a great loss in, t in order to appreciate your wins, or like. Your goals, whatever it may be in life, you know what I'm saying? Like, it takes small wins to make a big win. So I understand it's not... You You can win 100 times a day. You know what I mean? And, and you could take 10, 15 losses in a day in the same way. You know what I mean? But but I think it's that continuous success. That, that consistency, even when you do have a bad day, continuing forward. You know what I'm saying? And even know, like... You, you lose, you know what I mean, a natty last year. You come back this year stronger. You know what I'm saying? Like taking those 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 huge emotional moments, you know what I'm saying, no matter what type of loss it is, and being able to come back bigger, stronger, you know, more emotionally prepared for whatever moment you have to face next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you can't, when, when you're in those lows, right, and you lose or you're in, I mean, you just mentally you're out of it, right? We've all been to those periods where you just can't get out of it, and you'd give anything to just be back to feeling like a hundred bucks. Those are the moments where you're reflecting and you're looking at everything. What can I change in my daily routine? What can I do better? How can I be more ambitious? But very rarely, and this is where it's like you really have to push yourself. When you're winning, you you you're, you're, you're passive. You're thinking life's great, like things are coming, and then when shit happens, you're back to square one. So that's why when you're winning, it's I find it's even more important. When life is good, when you wake up and you're smiling, life's good. You got to reflect why that is, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and so when you get back to that, because life isn't like this, man. It's going to be yeah. like this. So when you get back down, you got to know, okay, well, I've been here before. And last time I learned that this is what happened. And I'm not going to let that shit happen again. It happened for me last year. With My grandma used yeah. to always say, this too shall pass. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever, whatever is going on. Sun will come out again. Yeah. But I... I I would say I think even you got to be aware that there will be highs, there will be lows. But I think there are the little things that you got to appreciate will always help you kind of stay consistent. Because I feel like especially there's this video of this basketball guy in college. He played his last game and he's tearing up in his press conference. And he's like, what are you going to miss most? And he's, he, I think a lot of people, you've probably I've seen, seen it, the yeah. video and he goes like eating with he said like eating with the boys going out or to eat. Going out to, <laughs> he's like going out to eat yeah. and people laugh it's like but that's what it is like it yeah. doesn't matter obviously you want to win it's important it's the most important thing but if i sit down with a couple of my teammates including these three guys i just know i'll have a, a top top hour hunter we can i can just get any just memories guarantee any? good oh talks my God. and we, just laugh so last year last year we would uh or no our freshman year we would have me and Sammy were obviously I was a freshman there, a year older than us, two years older than us. We would go to the McNutt Starbucks and we had like oh. unlimited Ooh. Starbucks. Dude, dude, it was me it was stupid. Our order. me and Sammy had like oh. unlimited Starbucks. So you swipe the card, you order whatever. So we would go there at like one o'clock. They kick us out. I swear to God, we're sitting there, it's like six, seven PM. Yeah. 
We're just. We're I mean, the I mean, we're there. Yeah. We're there. It, it would. It uh, would I like like we're looking outside. It's dark out. Yeah, we yeah. were there longer than some of the workers. Taking yeah. time for each other. But I think we would. Important. We would sit there and just. We would just talk. Like it would and. It, like it was just unreal time. But that takes unreal. effort. People don't realize that takes effort. You gotta, it, like, you gotta go out of your way sometimes and say, you know what, we're gonna go sit down and we're gonna just enjoy time. And yeah. Like you can get so caught up in things, and all of a sudden you go, man, it's been two weeks. I haven't had dinner with the boys, and it's like, that's how quickly it goes by. So you, you gotta, like, we were good about that and saying, you know what, we're gonna take time for this group and look out for each other, sit down. But it, it requires effort. People aren't willing to do that. Tell me, uh. Tell me how the experience the other day when Q came to Da Vinci's. <laughs> so let's let's so, yeah let's just address it. So you go ahead. It's your st- what the the hair part. So Q, uh, I suppose yeah. Q uh, lost a bet to a few of the other soccer guys. Um, we we dyed his hair. It didn't what was come the bet? The bet was uh, if we won. The should Big I Ten. explain it? Should yes, I explain yeah, go it? Ahead, go ahead. So there was a part in the season as Indiana, we always win. Like obviously, sometimes you don't, but we we're expected to win, and it's it's normal, it's routine. And at one point in the season, we're just down bad, and you know you try to stay confident, but guys on the team are pointing fingers, and it's it's just bad energy. It was just we we can lie now, now everything is good, but it was just it was not ideal. So we have one of these moments, these sit downs, and it was Nate Ward, who was also like an older guy in the team, and myself, and everyone is down. And I really valued my like hair, like like the blonde, you know, it's, it was my look. Yeah. So a little darker already, but like the blonde hair, you're a little tan. It was just, it was my look, you know? And I was like, I was like, you know what? If we turn this around, which it was looking unlikely at the time, but it was possible. I was like, I'm gonna dye my hair dark. No, we were dropping like game. It, it, it was not looking good. It, really, it, was, it, was, it was it was unlikely. It was the most like we were playing good enough to be getting results, but just the ball was not bouncing our way. It was that's why the bet was that's why the agreement was good because it was like all right if if we win the Big Ten, like and like I said, there was always that belief, but just where we were, it was <laughs> things, so things it was outrageous. It was outrageous. It was out of our control. Things needed to go our way. Yeah, and they did. Yeah, and then uh, things went our way, way, including my way, you know, because I had two more trophies like these guys. But uh, hair-wise, it was a rough, it was a rough week and a half, what would you say? Week and a half? Two weeks, maybe? I think I went from black to orange you, you, to you bright did, yellow. You did, the, you did the rainbow. I think I damn near did purple. <laughs> um... Now uh, maybe the lighting is deceiving. It's like light brown, which is still uncomfortable. But uh, <laughs> it you know, looks you, you, good. Gotta, you yeah, can you, say it. You can say it. You gotta good. roll with it. Laugh like it's good. Life is good again. But I would say for for a week, I would say that for the first time in my life, I can truly say that the confidence was wavering a little. Bit. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Hey, dude, my and <laughs> the crazy the crazy thing about um, Q's hair is. Before the season, the coaches throughout every Big Ten school vote on where they think each team will finish. But the thing is, you can't vote for your own school because yeah, yeah. they're like, oh, we're going to win this year. So you have to kind of vote it fair. So it was us, the top four, like us, Maryland, Ohio State, Rutgers. Three games into the Big Ten season, the tables flipped. We're like tied for last with Maryland, Rutgers, and Ohio State, while the other four teams that were voted to pick. So then that's where the bet came in. And, like, we're, Q was right. Like, at one point, we were, our record was, like, I think it was, what, 3-3-4? Three, three, and four? It was bad. It was, like, the worst record. I. It was, like, one of the worst starts to a season IU has seen. And we're like, oh, my gosh. So then we, we called a players meeting, and we're like, all right, we're going to wake up. We, we set a players meeting at 6, 7.30 a.m. We're like, short before train. We're that's, like, a, we're, that's another story. We're like, we're, we're going we're gonna to figure our shit out. This is Indiana. We're expected to win. And as soon as Q made that bet, it was destined we were going to win it. Like, because oh, he had ble- he had nice blonde hair. Like, it was you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. What back it, soon, back soon. What it was for me was we had just lost to Northwestern at Northwestern. The title was in our reach. Everything was in our control. We just had to win two more games, and we win the title. And we lost on the road. Tough game. And now, all of a sudden, it's out of our control. We need two other games on the final day to go our way for us to have a chance. And we still got to take care of business our own. 
and we're on the bus, dead quiet. Everyone's pissed. I look over, Q's pissed. We're all just, you know, it's deflating. And we're trying to just make the most of the moment. And Q, like, you know, we're just trying to crack a smile. And he goes, well, someone have to dye my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, that, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, sure enough. And then the last day, you couldn't script it better. I mean, yeah, it's 2-1 and a half. We're up on Rutgers. And then all of a sudden, there's rumbling going on. And it's Penn State's tied. What was the other game? Was no, Penn State. They, the, we needed we needed North two teams to. They couldn't win. That's all. Northwest. We had two teams. Down, yeah. There and those, both those teams were losing at halftime. Yeah. So then throughout the game, I'm like, holy shit, we might do this. So I'm asking our fans, like, yeah, the whole I'm game. Like, what I'm, the score was? I'm like, game, I'm like, I'm, I'm, looking like over and, I'm like, Josh, yeah. go on Twitter. Tell me the score of the Penn State game. And he's like, he's like counting down. He's like, there's 40 seconds left. They're tied. And I'm like, holy shit. So we're genuinely, gonna, we're like, gonna do the damn thing. Like everything went our way. The, the the emotions in that game were like exactly what it looked like. It was literally we had no idea what to expect. I mean, we had to take care of business. I mean, it was two to one, and we were absorbing pressure. Yeah. So it was like, like things can even go our way. It happened last year. Things went our way on the last day, but we we didn't take care of business. So, like when we when there's a video of our coach telling Joey after we scored that, hey, you're Big Ten champion. Like, we didn't know what it was going to take, what was going on. We just knew we had to take care of business, and it was fate, yeah. And here we are. And then the coolest yeah, thing... Brunette, Quentin Helmer. <laughs> the coolest thing is the hosting the Big Ten final. That's like... That was like our one goal. We're like, we, we got to host a final at home. And then you saw it. Bloomington popped out. It went crazy. Yeah. So back to the Da Vinci's trip. Yeah. So he came in right before. Yeah, we had we had dinner once again. We want to take the time of day, right? Sit yeah. down and the Vinci's second Q living room. You said I'll be back in second living room. <laughs> I'm there like regular, five times yeah. a week. It's not a problem. Go get dinner. Um, <laughs> we we went there last night, man. And, and, and guess what? <laughs> guess what? <laughs> I was there today. Yeah. He went we today. There. He texted me. He goes, Da Vinci question. I'm like, dog. We were just there, bro. Yeah. It's just good food, man. <laughs> it's good atmosphere. Well, yeah, here, tell the story about Da Vinci. Well, yeah, no, I mean, so... So, you, b before he came came to Da Vinci's, he came here and I stripped all the color that was in his hair out, and he was like... He was like bleach blonde. It had a red... It had a red it, 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 no, 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 no. Come on, when come I, on. Hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> when I stripped the color out, there was no red tint into it. So, he, he, he Collins was sitting over here, yeah. and Collins looks at him, he goes, oh, you look like me. <laughs> you look like me right now, because Collins' hair is bleached. Yeah. Hey, we put, a, we put a little bit of a toner in it, changed the color slightly, right? No, 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 no. This is not how it went. Hey, he, <laughs> no, I he loved that left. From, I love that from Kane, but listen, how he knew me up until that point, I tend to be pretty, like, they know me a little different, but pretty easy going. Like yeah. In a so setting like this, I'm calm. But he's like, he's like, it's easy, easy process for me, you know. He, and he rightfully so, great barber, you know. He, he he knows what to do. Yeah. But we go and we sit down, and he rinses it out, and I was excited because I just wanted to, you know, get that whatever purple thing I had going for a week. You know, it was the problematic. Red shit. It was problematic. And I'm looking forward to him washing it out. Yeah, and he he washes it out, and I look at his at his eyes. Like I'm laying with my hands. <laughs> it's all new to me, right? And yeah. I, look, I like I re I was a little nervous. I I look at his eyes, and they be just became like bigger. <laughs> and I go like, how, how does it look? You know? He goes, ah, oh, it looks great. <laughs> He's like, so I, I'm like, all right, that's good, that's good. He's like, follow me to the station. So this that mirror right there. Yeah, yeah. I look in the mirror. All right, my hair was more yellow. Then the McDonald's logo. Yeah. If I would walk around with that on campus, people would start ordering hamburgers. Yeah. All right? So I'm panicking. And I remember, he knows me as a calm guy. I, I look right in, his, in your eyes. I, look, the mirror. I go, the and mirror. I, my, my, my mood switched. Yeah. I say, listen, man. I was like, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving this place before you fix it. <laughs> he said, no, listen. He said, he said, Kane, there's not another human on earth with this killer hair. <laughs> I said, Q, listen, we talked about this. We were going to have to die after. So we died. It was part of the process. Hey, and this is the thing. This is the thing. You don't think that I'm freaking out? No, you probably When we are. stripped this color and it turned yellow? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like, what... I see you're freaking out. You know what I'm saying? If I were to freak out too, how are we gonna? How are we gonna resolve this if we're both bitch. freaking out? Hey, those candies though. 
The candy, that helped. The candy, candy. I was eating some was, Starburst yeah, minis. He was like, yeah, just get this. He's like, chew on these for a second. I'm going to think about what we need to do. <laughs> We're going to fix you it. You got any more of those right here? No, I know. I smashed them. Fuck. No, but the gratitude is significant. You know, I'm still on my so, way back, but. As he gets out to leave the door, okay, he's got this Miami's Dolphins hat on. Oh. Right? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, we know the hat. He walks out, right, and he's so upset. He's like, you're going to have the color when I come back, and we're going to dye it. And I'm like, yes, bro, yes. So he leaves. He goes off to Da Vinci's. Tell me about your interaction at Da Vinci's. Oh, my gosh, dude. Because he came right here afterwards to dye it. Yeah. yeah. So while he's here, right, I'm texting him, yo, we, we still good for dinner? Yes, bro. Only issue. I'm having a crisis. And I'm going, <laughs> what happened? So he comes into Da Vinci's and I'm expecting the worst. The worst. I mean, he's texting me, my hair is yellow. It's neon green. I don't know, right? And he comes in with his dolphins hat, right? And I'm going, oh boy, like I'm ready. You know, I'm going to be the friend who just, you know, calm presence, whatever, lifts the hat off. And I'm like, oh, it's not bad at all. I mean, you saw it. It was, it was, it was good. It was it's bleached. Obviously, it was closer to your natural color. But the problem was, it was your hair had been through a lot. It, it got it got zapped a few times by the old hair dye. Yeah, so it was it was frail. So and we were we were at the point where we're like, it's better we're better off not touching it, and just letting time take its course. So we end up eat dinner, get through it, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Jack, Jack's feeling it. Yeah, and uh, Q comes back and. This is history. I come back with no hat on. And no hat. I no felt hat good on. about myself. Chest out. And, you know, we did the only thing to do. Yeah. Let's go out. So it was My good. Dog. Let's go out. It was good. No. He said, he said, he said, Ken, listen, I have something to do at 12 tonight. You need to, you need to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do the accent. The accent. Hey, hey, dude, it was the funniest. Hey, just make, make sure I'm ready by 12. Am and I, I kind of was. No, it was good. <laughs> I tell you what, though, was. And, and this goes for the fashion, for the hair. Ninety-five percent of it is just the confidence. Because when you had that blonde hair, between walking in Da Vinci's and walking out, when you walked in, you could tell that your hair was dyed. And when you walked out, you could be like, "He's ro he's rocking it, he's killing." It. Yeah. Hey, Wardo, Wardo is the perfect example of he's that. He's rocking it. Uh, I hate he hate it. He, he ate it. He ate it. Oh, he ate it. I he thought ate. you said he hates no, he it. I was like, he, he does. No, he, he ate it. I cut his hair earlier today, and he's sitting in here, and he's like, if you want me to be honest, man, I think I might keep it like this. And I was like, I was like, you get, I was like, you get a skin fade on the side, so realistically, like, you would just bleach your roots every month. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, dude, honestly, I like it. I was like. Okay, but the, the last thing we're going to say about this, you know what the difference was? He went from dark dark hair like very dark the platinum blonde it's obvious it was a bet or it was something crazy yeah i went from a color that a lot of people would want would want and like to have to what was supposed to be a dark blonde light brown and i went to like orange <laughs> i look i look like the lady from uh sansa from game of thrones <laughs> I was waiting for Joffrey to yell at me, this little fucker. So I was like, this is stressful. <laughs> oh my and God. And the worst, I will say the worst part about Q's hair when he, when he first came into the locker room is it, you would never know he lost a bet. It just looked like he thought it would look good. Cause yes. like Wardo, you know, he lost a yes. bet. You could tell he's not platinum blonde. But what I will say is we have to keep in mind that this, once again, it was a friendly bet. And usually with bets, you're not betting something that you'd want to do anyway. So obviously you were going to suffer. Oh, yeah. And let's keep oh, yeah. in mind, you were a man of your word. I am. And you went through with it. And for that, hey. we'll ever, we will forever be grateful. Forever. You, you are a man of life. your word. And just your blunt truth, you have a ginormous set of balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, you, you know what he says to our coach sometimes. Uh, he got fucking saying. balls. <laughs> your bluntness. You double down. <laughs> yes. Double down, man. When they call you out, double yeah. down. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Q's favorite so saying. Q, yeah, we're talking the other day. We're when they call you out, we're, double well, down. We're talking the other day about like how some some really good players 
never got to their full potential because just when it had attitude problems or whatever. And some players are good punching bags that the coach can use, and you yeah. the coach can yell at them, and then they'll take it. And Q goes, like when a coach goes, like you'll mumble something on your brow, the coach goes, the fuck you say? Some players just walk away. Q goes, hell no. That's where you double down. You tell them exactly what you said. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, fuck I say. Here's what I he said. said. I said, fuck your laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you told him that. <laughs> No, I have. To, yeah, I don't think he he's gonna watch this, but if he does, I have to thank Coach. <laughs> coach, if you see this, thank you for some of your patience. I think I've grown a lot over the years, and every now and then it's still it happened a couple of times. But thank you for your patience. That story was crazy. Yeah, that was on that the last pod. Was yeah. Crazy. That story was crazy. But at the same time, like that's kind of that's a culture shock, you know, for me. That's where I'm from. <laughs> for example, freshman year, there was this French guy on our team, <laughs> unbelievable player, but similar, like he, him, and I had similar, I would say, behavioral issues. <laughs> behavioral sure. issues. All right. Like he's a stray dog. So you would just we would play and a little maybe a little arrogant, like I can do this and other guys can't or whatever, and they mess up and you just scream at them, right? <laughs> so I mean, I can't re- repeat it, but like bad. So coach was like, you know, take a lap. Or that's what's, that was his new solve for all that. So it was fine. It worked for a while. But then at one point, I got tired of the, the laps. Because there were hell, there were a lot of them. Dude ran a marathon. I ran a marathon. <laughs> He's running miles. Several, several times. So I thought my, I thought my solution was simple. I'm not going to cuss anymore in English. I'm just going to do it in Dutch. So every from that moment on, I just... Cuss in Dutch because no one understands, and I get my fr- frustration out of Can the you way, give right? us a little? And all of a sudden, coach stops practice. It was freshman year. He probably doesn't remember this. He goes, "If you speak Dutch one more time in practice, <laughs> you're out." <laughs> so I go like, "Damn, there's nothing I can do anymore, right?" So one time we're just kicking the ball around. And I was actually feeling it in practice. Great mood, and I I do something and I say in Dutch because I still I was at the time very Dutch still. I'm just, and I say something like, oh, my God, that was beautiful. In Dutch. How do you right? say it? How do you say In it? In Dutch, I was like, wow. Say it. Wow. How do you? Like, wow. Dude, and coach, coach looks at me, and he goes, you're out. And I look at him, and I'm like, whoa, what do you mean? He's like, no more Dutch. Laugh. <laughs> like, there's just stuff like that. It's just miscommunication a lot. But it's been a fun ride between him and I, and I think we came a long way. Can you, we, uh, the be- can you, can you? Say like, yeah, like say like that. You're fucking shit in Dutch. Like if you're yelling at a player. I was friend of the Yabin Tinnap. Yabin Tinnap. I'm not even mad. Like wow, Yabin is so nap. Like it's stuff like that. They don't understand, and I get my frustration out of it. <laughs> like damn, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> damn, you suck. <laughs> so yeah, it's just stuff like that. But f- fun memories. The, the the fuck your lab one was a whole different level. Uh, the uh, but that's a, the story for another day, maybe. <laughs> He, Q has some all-time stories that, like, he's matured a lot, so we don't get th- – that doesn't really happen anymore. So, like, all these freshmen that come in, they kind of just hear about them. They're like fairy tales, like, because they never see it anymore. It's like once upon a time. They're like, well, Q's called. Like, like, yeah, like, these. these, these it's so funny because it's like, like the Lawson story, like, after training. <laughs> like, all right, all right. This, this is my personal favorite. I got a good one now. Right, real, right. so real quick, real quick. Yeah. Oh so, so we, so we, so we're um. Can I get a there's, th- there's a kid that transfers name is Lawson Redmond. So, he, he, he kind of had an issue. Very nice kid, but he would always come into tackles late. Not because he meant to hurt you, just it was kind of clumsy sometimes. And so, you know, it's if you come in late on cue, you know, other he might get a little mad, rightfully so. So one day, <laughs> Q, Q, so Q, um comes in a tackle late and just wipes Lawson out and gets thrown out of training. Payback. But we didn't know. But listen to this. So I we had not. we had we had a game the night prior. So if you play X amount of minutes, it's like 50 minutes. You do like stretching while the other guys train. So like oh. there's like 11 of us like stretching or whatever. And we walk in the locker room and we have a, we're talking to Q. And halfway through the convo, we're like, wait, why the fuck aren't you training? Why are you in the locker room? And he goes, so he explains that the tackle happened on Lawson and that Coach thought it was too hard. He threw him out, and Lawson was rolling around and crying, and whatever. So then, after after training, Lawson's sitting in his locker like this, and we see Q go up to him like he's about to be the bigger man, and he goes like this. He goes, "Good, Lawson, man. I just want to make sure you're going good. You good, Lawson." He goes, 
get the fuck out of here, pussy. <laughs> just walked away. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's ridiculous. No, but it's funny because in that challenge, well, you know, I broke my <laughs> foot. He broke my foot. So I think I was in the right the whole time. But it's fine. We we move on. Love that kid. But here's what we got to keep in mind. The uh, teams, it's brotherly love. Right? Yeah, so yeah, this, yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. hear this from the outside and it sounds bad. <laughs> but like, I mean, this is how, if you've grown up with siblings, like this is what it's like. It's a locker room. He yeah. said, he it's broke my room. foot. <laughs> no, but he like did. the fake dap up was just so iconic. He's like, bro, you good? Get the fuck out of here. No, r- real quick. There was one training. I think last year, the or my freshman year, Q comes up to me before training. He goes, Bro, I have a bad feeling about today. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm a, <laughs> nah, JT, JT was making a TikTok before he goes, most oh likely to get thrown out of training. I'm like, this is a joke. It was as like, a joke. We were like, and everyone, Nick and I would always make fake TikToks and it'd be like, like pretending like there was like someone like holding up a board, like, what's the question of the day? And it was like, most likely to kick that training. I was like, oh, tough one. Q. <laughs> yeah. And uh, everyone so knows it's Q. It. He tells me this, like, <laughs> I have a bad feeling about it. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I might get kicked out of training <laughs> today. I'm like, dog. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What, what do you What do you plan? Like, you don't plan that. <laughs> Hour later, <laughs> showers. Hit the showers. <laughs> Done. Done. Uh, I'll say. Um. There. There's been a few of those. I. I've never been kicked out of training, but my freshman year, as a freshman, I made us run two days in a row. And the you for that. the whole team. I, I was having a, said, I'm not well, bro, because you know you you you've been through more of it than we have. Like the spring is just like oh. no games, it's just training. So it's like some days and it's brick cold out. You're like dog, like this sucks. So so one day I, I get a breakaway versus JT and 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 I go around him, but I take the touch too big, so it goes out of bounds. And I'm like I'm so mad at myself. I was already having a d- bad day in training, and I'm like I want to go kick that post, but the goal was too far. So I pick up a ball. First thing I saw, and I punted this thing to like Briscoe. Like, I connected on it so well. Coach goes, everyone on the line. And, but like, uh, then the next day, Pat, me and Patty got into like a little altercation, and I I was already on tilt from the day prior, and it kind of just built up through the whole week. So Patty's dribbling down the line, and I'm like, man on, Pat, man on. They're coming. I'm like, Pat, you're going nowhere. You're going nowhere. I'm like, Pat, you're going fucking nowhere on the line. And then, all the upperclassmen are like, who's this freshman making us run? But, like, if that happened when Q was a freshman, I don't know what they would have done. But luckily, like, I was closer with the older guys like Q because, like, I probably dodged a bullet if I came a year prior. Yeah. It's, it's important to provide some entertainment, too. Yeah. Sometimes, I yeah. think. 100%. It's yeah, good, 100%. you know, for the people sometimes. But I got a question <clears throat> um, really, kind of relating to, like, when we had you guys on, I mean, what were you? Maybe like you had just lost three of four, or two of four, whatever it was. You were not what your expectation was, right? And there was, you know, you guys kind of rallied. Like, how was there ever a point where you guys looked at each other and you're like, maybe this isn't the year? A hundred percent. I mean, there's, there, we've had a few combos. Yeah, I mean, no, there's there's a couple combos we had where, like, I mean, there's, like, guys are pointing fingers. That happens, like, yeah, in, that, in, yeah. in bad, in, in teams that are struggling, that, that happens. It's not, it's not, not, it's not unusual for that those things to happen. Obviously, we weren't used to it because we've done well since, since we've been here in our time here. But there were conversations oh, where it's 100%. like, just, we just, we, so or maybe there's too much hype. Like, we, yeah, like we just might not be those guys. We might not be able to play together. Like this just might not be well, and the it's team. Not even, it's not even that. It was, I mean, you go back, like you watch Notre Dame, watch Washington, watch these games that we weren't, weren't getting the results. We were by far the better team. We had yeah. the better chances. Sometimes sports are just cruel. Yeah. You know, and like that's what it was through that period. I just remember coming off the field against you know, a Washington. You're like, man, like. We dominated the game. They made some plays. Some bounces didn't go our way. If a ball's an inch lower, that's in the back of the net. And that's just, it's, it's what it is. And I, I just remember that being the most, like, deflating feeling because it's like, we're doing everything right. Yeah. But, like, you need to get a little lucky. And that's life. You just got to get a little yeah. lucky sometimes. And I'll say this. I'll say what <laughs> what winning means, especially here. We t- we tied our first game versus Wisconsin. 
and we walk off we're like, all right, first game of the Big Ten, whatever. And then who do we play second? We played Michigan State third, but we Michigan? played Michigan. We home. played no, no, that was after. Anyways, we played a team second and we didn't win again. And then we play Michigan State. We're like, we need a result. And this is this is where like the win. This is like where the passion comes in. And we lose to Michigan State, so we're winless in three games. And after the game, I'm I'm like cussing out the team. I'm like, like this is Indiana. What the fuck are we doing? Like this is not the standard. And then we we play another game, and and but keep in mind we're out playing these teams, which is frustrating. So I'm just like, I'm like Joey, you're our captain. We need you, man. Like step like. So I'm just like uh, whatever, like cussing out everyone. And then we tie Michigan, and I look over at Tommy in the locker room, and like I like teared up after the Michigan State game. I'm like, our season is falling apart. Like as in front of our eyes, like we are going to be the worst like team in the Big Ten, and then I, I look at Tommy after we tied Michigan, and then he's got like his towel over his head. And I'm like, and I could see. It. I'm like, dude, what's wrong? Because he's tearing up. He's like, we just can't fucking win. And then our coach came in the next day, and he, I think this is what changed our season. He's like, a good team will look at what's happening to us and say, why? Like they won't believe it's happening. They'll say, why is this happening to us? But a great team will wake the fuck up and say, how are we going to fix this? There's X amount of games left. Let's wake up. After he says that, we win nine of our last 10 games and turn our season around. And now we look back at some of these games. We're like, how the fuck did we tie them? Like we rolled them. Like, or in the, in the, like there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to win the Big Ten tournament. As soon as we were the one team, I'm like, we're going to win this thing. But you like in those games, like or in training, I'd look around like at the team. I'm like, how are we lose? Like, yeah, you look I'm at the like, players. I'm looking at like our attacking, like our front four, our back line, like everything. I'm just like, dude, we have like our team. We have everything. Like, what is the issue? And I think that was the that was kind of the hardest part is like figuring out like what is the problem, you know? Because the first thing you can do is like just, oh, this guy's not good enough. Like this guy's hurting us. That guy's hurting us. But like, it's it wasn't. I don't think it was the case. Like we we had everything we needed, you know. <laughs> but I think it's just like those struggles were normal. I think every team, and maybe yeah. it's a good thing. Maybe the way I think we needed that we managed to turn it around. Maybe it was a good thing, and uh, yeah, maybe we wouldn't have got to the point where we got now if we started off hot. You know, because there's teams that did start off hot. Oh, there's the teams not that even in the tournament. Yeah. But like, how are those teams going to lose? And they're not even playing now. You know, they're done. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. there's there's a few teams that were like. Eight, eight and one to start the year. Now they're not. They didn't make the tournament this year. Jeez. And I will say this though, we uh, we did have a rough spell, but we never really lost confidence. We got upset away one game, and this kid came up to us, and he was talking mad shit. And I was like, I'm just gonna keep my composure. But he, then he started talking more shit, and I I, I literally told him because I it's IU. Like I knew we were gonna be okay. We always are. Like. And I literally said, I said, wipe that smile off your face because I know when it comes November, you're going to be watching us play in the tournament. Kid didn't, the, his team didn't make the tournament. Now now they're going to watch us play. They watched us win the Big Ten, and that's how it goes. So it's like we never lost confidence. We were just. What I say What I say at Buffalo is that when I, we were arguing, I go, I wasn't talking. They're, we're having it like there's six of us. It's getting a little heated. Guys are kind of, you know, blaming this guy, how we're training. Yeah. And I, I just wasn't talking. I was just like. Te- these people were saying this they will be watching us play in november this is like early september i'm like people will be watching us in september in november play and i managed to turn around yeah long way to go still though of course oh, yeah. of course I mean, no, we're nowhere 100%, yet 100 but i think I- i'm proud of how we how we managed to to keep going because I mean, at a certain point, we were fighting f- to make the tournament, yeah. you know, which for IU, we made the tournament 36 years in a row, I believe. This is the 37th year in a row to make it. And it's hard to make the tournament. I mean, yeah, there's good teams. Penn State, they're a great team that we just played. Like, great team, yeah. that's that's a team that, that can beat anyone, and they didn't even make the tournament. They, like, but they it, made it to the Big Ten yeah. final, and they got great players. So it's hard to do. But I'm I'm proud that we we turned it around. But of course we have so much left, and I think I think yeah. we're all we're ready for that. Yeah, and putting it in perspective, like Penn State won the regular season with us and made it to the final and didn't make the NCAA tournament. So it's not like yeah. everyone just gets in. Like yeah, you got to yeah. earn it. You know, yeah. it's just no hundred percent. So I think they got robbed a little bit. But um, like he said, like I'm really happy we turned it around. But I remember that, and uh, Tommy kept receipts. All these Twitter trolls. 
the first full, like five games of our season saying it's the worst IU team that we've ever had, blah, blah, blah. And then we win both Big Tens. So like then like, now what are they going to say? We didn't win by enough? <laughs> they don't a win is a win. Is, is there something that you guys learned, you know, coming into the tournament last year? Right? Like, are you going to apply anything you learned last year from last year's experiences to this year and, and trying to go for one more of those? Um, I would just say the, the thing that probably motivates, I would say, the players that were here last year is how bad it hurt to just be so close to it. So that's kind of the motivation to get back, like, just get another shot at it. Like, every game, you can't really plan it because every game's different. You play a different team or, like, we're not going to play the same teams we did last year. You have to adapt. We don't have the same players we did last year. So it's like, but I would say the feeling of walking off that field without that trophy is like the worst heartbreak you can imagine. And he's felt it twice. And it was like something like, I remember after the game, I, was, I told Q, I was like, I love you, dude. I'm like, we were just crying. Like, you can't like, it's an indescribable feeling. And then you just watch the other team lift your trophy that like you should have won, you know? So for me, the motivation is just that feeling of how it felt last year. And that's what our coach told us before the Big Ten tournament. Penn State beat us in the final my freshman year of Big Ten. He's like, remember how that felt when they lifted the trophy and all their fans came on the field? He's like, so if you need to go to a deep, dark place in your head to get that out, do it. And then, with like, that's exactly So that's kind of what fuels me is, like, how losing just sucks so much. Yeah, one thing for me, too, is I remember when I came in, to Indiana on a visit. Obviously, I was in the portal at the time, and I was talking with Coach, and he was talking about our schedule, the way we approach the season, and for us, we play a we try to play the toughest schedule we can play in the regular season <laughs> against Bless you. many different opponents of many different playing styles, so that when it comes time in November, we are ready for that. And for us in the national tournament, I mean, it's it's every game at a time, and that's where for us we can't look past tomorrow. It's we got to beat Lipscomb in every phase of the game, and then we just keep working from there. So for us, it's – and it, it happened throughout the season this year. It's staying the course, trusting the process, understanding you don't win the game. You don't win the, the season after three games, right? You don't win the national tournament yeah. after the first game. So for us, we, we've played so many different teams at this point. We've been through so much adversity that it's – we're ready for anything that's still in our way. So it's just trusting that we've, we we're ready. We've put in the work. And being like – I think – being present, like your question, I think being present in the moment, I think sometimes we just like, it's like, oh, let's just, uh, we're all just thinking, oh, let's just get to the college cup, but like enjoying like every single day. I think sometimes we take that for granted in the life journey. too. Yeah, the journey. journey, like the struggles, like there's a certain point, um, I was kind of just telling myself like, you know what, enjoy, like enjoy the struggle maybe a little bit more than you do because I think the first thing when you're struggling, you just want to get out of it where it's like once you're out of it, you don't even realize like now we're doing obviously better. It's like we just, we, we, we're like now we're careless, like carefree, you know, which is a good thing. But when you're in those struggles, I think we sometimes you got to enjoy that more and almost embrace it because it, it goes by fast, you know. The season, like, yeah. shit, it would have been nice to be back in September again, you know, and see there's three months left of the year. But yeah. there's only a couple weeks left, and obviously there's so much ahead of us, so much of the big games are ahead of us. But I think sometimes just staying present in the moment, that's what I think a lot of guys are doing now, just enjoying everything, um, the small things, trainings, recovery days, just everything. I think that makes it so much more special. Who do you think is <clears throat> someone – maybe like underrated on the team that doesn't necessarily get the spotlight. John Lucas Hummel. John Lucas Hummel. John Lucas Hummel. The man. He is the the ray of sunshine in your life. I mean, honest to God, he is everything I'd want a teammate. Every morning I walk in the locker room and I know damn well that he's going to come in with his music blasting on his iPhone. He's going to have those man. sunglasses on. The who mullet. knows Got what, the mullet. The mullet. Who knows what uh, what he's going to be wearing. And he is going to be smiling and laughing before you even say anything. And, about. like, a guy like that, for, obviously, if you don't know, like, he, he, Hummel doesn't, he doesn't play at all. But a guy like that is just as important to a team. Yeah, if not as more. As someone who more plays important. every single yeah. minute. Because yeah. those are the guys driving you in training every single day. Those are the yeah. guys that bring the energy when it's low. Um... And he is a great player. Like, Homo gives it his all. Like, he's definitely a guy that – he's a guy when you win, like, 
you feel like th- like we did that for a guy like that yeah. you know who yeah. every day is there doesn't get any type of spotlight or any type of recognition to people who obviously don't know the team up close or or like us obviously but it's a guy like that special to the team yeah you, know, you also got to keep in mind obviously this is all even this podcast is like very serious we have a serious approach to like winning and all that but in the end we're still just a group of friends that are trying to have fun so it's important to have guys obviously be smart but off the field, you want to be surrounded by guys so you can have a good time with them. As we said earlier, you want to be able to have good laughs and good memories and good adventures. So he's one of those guys also because I truly believe if he goes to another program, he'll be one of the better players. But it's about, you know, making yourself less important and being off the field is being one of – off the field, it doesn't matter if you're a 90-minute guy or a guy as, as like Lucas who we just talked about. You're just one of the friends and – we're just gonna have a good time and yeah. fun, fun chapter in our lives. So it's very important to smile together. I'll say uh, I think a lot of other programs that tend to struggle have guys that don't play, and they're kind of like, all right, well, coach isn't playing me. Fuck this. I'm not gonna try today. Yeah. Whereas he's a guy that's like, he's like, all right, if I want, if we, if we need to win, I need to make sure the starters are as best as they can be. Or he just pulls his weight every day and other people's too. And it's like when you lose or you don't try as hard, it's like, you feel bad for him. I'm like, fuck, like, this kid puts in everything today, and, I, and we just lost. Like, you feel bad for, like, I'm like, damn, like, so when I'm, like, tired or whatever, I think, like, you know, it's like, you owe it to those guys, like, who get no recognition from the media, or, like, without those guys, we're, we're, we're nothing, you know? One, one of our goalies, um, Austin Heimbaugh, he, he's another guy, like, that guy, like, I don't, I don't even know what, like he just barely gets those obviously recognition and stuff but every day i mean pushing he's a goalkeeper so obviously jt knows him obviously in that sense but i'm sure he pushes him to the max but you just see guys like that just ready to go every day and it's like without those guys like our our team we can't win games just without yeah. some of those guys because there's so much more than the 90 minutes we play you know mm-hmm. i mean we're sure. like those guys are such a big part and and they're special people and those are the people you you play for and you want to win for because that's what that's what makes a team special oh yeah i think we're gonna wrap it up here in a second with that being said q would you uh look at the camera and say thanks for watching in dutch yeah which one is it which one is it that one Bedankt voor het kijken. Like, subscribe. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. Like, My boy. That was, oh. that was awesome. I enjoyed that a lot. Peace. I enjoyed that. that was-